Hi, Jason Allen Griffin here, and I'm gonna start making a sourdough starter. So I'm gonna start with this jar, and I'm gonna add what I've measured out to be just a little bit more than three quarters of a cup of flour. And then I'm gonna add a half cup of filtered water. I'll stir it up so it looks like this. <laughs> Can't really see. It's too bright. So it looks like, well, you can't really tell, but it looks like wallpaper paste. Now I'm gonna put a towel on top of it and let it sit on the counter until tomorrow. Hi, it's day two. So I uh, opened up my jar and there's a few bubbles in there. So I'm gonna stir it up and feed it. I'm gonna feed it today, what I fed it yesterday. Bob's Red Mill unbleached, all-purpose, organic white flour. It's three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons and a half cup of water. It's kind of starting to look like pancake batter. And then I'll scrape it to make sure it gets off the edges. Then the towel goes back on. Day three of the sourdough starter experiment. I'm covering my monster here it looks like it's about doubled in size and as they're supposed to be it's it's filled with bubbles and it still it smells kind of like pancake batter and it also moves around like kind of a runny batter so now i'm going to add flour and a half cup of water stir it up and put it away for another day Uncovering after day four. Still pretty runny. Still got bubbles in it. More runny than it was yesterday. Today's feeding. One cup minus one tablespoon of flour, which I assume is the same as three quarters cup plus two tablespoons of flour. And that's a half a cup of water. Keeping our fingers crossed for a positive outcome. So it's got a slightly yeasty, kind of almost cheesy smell. Very mild. Welcome to day five. It's actually the fourth overnight since it's day five anyway. So, there's bubbles in it. I kind of think there's supposed to be more bubbles than this. Getting a little bit worried, to be honest. There's no bad smell or anything, but it just doesn't seem like it's as fermented as it's described in sources I've looked at. But I'm gonna feed it one more time. Maybe I'll give it a little bit less water than I have been giving it. Stingy with the water. So we'll stir that up, set it aside for uh, another 24 hours. Hello there, so it's day six and I've been missing a step which is that you're supposed to scoop some out and discard it every day so that the, the yeast isn't overwhelmed by the old stuff. Seems wasteful, and I'm really opposed to waste, but... Now since the measurements are supposed to be by weight and not by volume, I can't exactly just throw in a half cup and then a half cup of water because they don't weigh the same. But someone has done the math for me, letting me know that this is um, the proper measurement is half of a cup minus half of a tablespoon. There and then a quarter cup of water there. And then stir this all up. Now I would describe the smell now as uh, slightly sourdoughy. So it's been one week since I uh, initiated the creation of this starter. So now I'm just gonna consider it done and go on to the next step which is to create a dough. So I'm gonna take one cup of the starter, 
put it into a bowl. It doesn't look like it's right to me because it's supposed to be f um, spongy and this is very liquidy. But I'm just going to go ahead, make my recipe and see what happens. Every source that I found regarding making sourdough says that it's an art more than it's a science. None of the recipes really said this is the definitive way to make sourdough and they all sort of suggest that trial and error and experimentation is the best way to go. So with that in mind, I, uh, I'm going to start my dough recipe. And then what I've done is taken the sourdough starter that I'm not using today and putting it into a jar, sealing it, and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And then um, when I'm ready to start using it again, I take it out a few days before and then just refeed it a couple of times to reactivate it. But now it's gonna go to sleep in the refrigerator. Good night, sourdough starter. And I added about a half teaspoon of salt, about a quarter cup of water, and just over one and a half cups of flour. So for about 15 minutes, I've been kneading with an emphasis on folding the dough into itself. I'm trying not to press down too much, but just to continually fold it over on itself. And so then what I have here is a ball of dough. Now there's supposed to be something called the window pane test to see, to test if your dough is done, that you should be able to pull it apart like this until it gets so transparent that you can actually see light through it. And mine isn't going to do that. It's kind of actually, no, it's actually working, isn't it? Oh, almost there. So I'm going to knead it for just a few more minutes. Okay, so I've buttered this loaf pan very generously. I used about a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to take my dough that's been kneaded. Oh my God, it's sticking to the bowl. There we go. And I'm just going to plop it in there. I'm going to slit the top. I don't know why, but that's what it says. So I'm just going to slit some diagonal cuts in the top here. That's my loaf. Seven hours later, hasn't risen much at all. I mean, very little. It's puffed a little bit. Hasn't risen at all. I've learned a lot. When I started, I didn't really understand what a starter even was or what the concept was, but now I get it. And I'm going to bake this anyway and see what, what happens. 3.50 for an hour. Actually, it rose quite a bit in the oven and it doesn't even look half bad. It's still piping hot. I'm gonna let it cool for about an hour and I'm actually kind of looking forward to cutting it open. It's pretty tasty. Um, not very sour. It's kind of like a, a, a bagel, actually. It's really, really dense but I did get some air pockets, as you can see, and um, it's pretty good. So I'm gonna have some for breakfast tomorrow, and most of all, it's been an education, so I learned a lot, and hopefully next time I'll have a lot more activity before I use my starter.